Developers feel very strongly about the tools that they use. We usually have a strong preference for IDEs, tools, languages, frameworks that we use in our day-to-day -day jobs. But it's one thing to defend our choice of IDE to the death, it's another to really understand how to use it to be truly productive in our day job. We need to continually invest time in learning what the tools that we use are capable of and how they can best support us as we do what we do as programmers. Hello, I'm Trisha G. Welcome to the Continuous Delivery Channel. If this is your first time here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, please hit like. Today I want to walk you through three different sets of tools that we might use in our day job, particularly as Java or JVM developers. The goal of this video is not to show you specifics on how to use these tools, but to demonstrate how, if you know certain features of the tool set that you use, you will be more productive in your job as a developer. So the first tool I want to look at is the IDE, is IntelliJ IDEA. Not a huge surprise if you know that I worked for JetBrains for seven years and spent a lot of time teaching people how to use the IDE effectively. But the reason why I got into that job is because I feel very passionately that it's important to understand how the IDE can help you as a developer. I'm gonna give you a tiny, tiny demo of some of the features that maybe you already know, but the idea is to kind of show you how the IDE can help you stay in the flow and help you be productive as a developer. So let's create ourselves a new class. All the keyboard shortcuts will pop up on the bottom of the screen. So if there's any new keyboard shortcuts, then, uh, then hopefully you'll learn them there. I'm gonna create a new class. I'm gonna use live templates to create a main method. I can either use public static void main or I can use main, both of those do the same thing. Generates all the boilerplate for me. I use sout to do system out println, and I use hello to, to type hello. And then I can run that. And so I'm gonna use code generation, live templates, code completion to quickly create the code when I know what the shape of the code should be, I just need to keep moving forward. Now we're not always creating uh, main methods. Sometimes we might be creating, uh, let me see if I can do what I want to do here. Um, I'm going to create a new Java class with uh, this uh, package and I'm going to call it developer test. IntelliJ IDEA will automatically put the right package and put it in the right place so I don't have to mess around with the mouse putting it into the right package there. Um, I'm going to use a custom made live template to create a test. I like my tests to look like this, so I created a live template to do this. So, should create a new developer with a name. And you see the, the live template creates everything I want for this test method, and then I'm gonna create a new developer uh, with a name, Trisha. Use a complete current statement, one of my favorite things. F2 to navigate to the error create a new class developer, which will put it in the right package, get IntelliJ to just create all of that for me, uh, add it to git, uh, a string parameter of name. Uh, what can I do? Do I want a failing test? Uh, right now I'm going to use, oops, alt and enter to create a field for this, populate that field, no problem whatsoever, switch back to the test, uh, I need this to be a variable, let's call it developer. I need to do a set equals developer dot get name. I'm gonna create a read-only property name in developer. I want this to be a string. It's going to automatically do that for me, uh, return the name. I kind of want it ret to return null so my test fails, but let's, let's just, do the fast thing, uh, F2, let's go to the next error. I want this to be, oops, I want this to be Trisha. And then when I run that, it should pass. Great, so I created, um, I, I created a test first. I used the test to drive the creation of the classes that I need. Um, and I really like the way that IntelliJ IDEA allows me to create stuff. If there's a, if there's a compilation failure, IntelliJ IDEA will allow me to create stuff in the right shape to stop that compilation failure. So as you can sort of see, as you get to know the IDE, as you get to understand how the features can help your creative flow, it can really help speed you up. 
The next area I want to look at in terms of tooling is the language. I believe that we should get familiar with the language that we're using at least enough that we can be more effective and more productive. In the last example, we were using Java. We had a developer class which had a field, a getter, a constructor. We could have optionally added two string hash code equals, maybe some other fields, some other getters and setters. As of Java 16, this can be a record. As a record, it has significantly less boilerplate. It has just the fields. We can optionally override various things, but generally when it's just a data container, it will be a record with a set of fields. Now, why is this better than a traditional Java POJO with getters and setters? Well, in a traditional Java data class, we don't necessarily know if the getters and setters are doing some unusual behavior changing activities without actually looking at the getters and setters themselves. We don't know if the two string implementation is the same as all of the other two string implementations or if it's a custom implementation. With a record, when we see the record, we know exactly what we're going to get from it. It is a data class. It is immutable. It doesn't have a weird and custom two string implementation unless I explicitly declared a weird and custom two string implementation. So from this point of view, newer features in Java can help our productivity mostly around improving the way which we read code, reducing the cognitive load that we need when we're reasoning about what does this code do? What does this code do? It's a data container. It doesn't do anything else. Now I can move on and concentrate on the thing that I'm trying to do next. What is the next problem I'm trying to solve? The final tool I want to show you to give you a demonstration of how knowing your tools can help you to be more productive is the build tool, in this particular case, Gradle. Yes, I work for Gradle right now, so I am gonna show you some Gradle stuff. Um, this is a multi-module project. It uses a Gradle, a Gradle build. If I build this normally, it will take, it won't take very long because it's a demo project. There's not a lot of tests in here. It takes seven seconds. And what I'm doing is I'm publishing a build scan for this build because I want to show you what the build looks like. In the build scan, on the timeline, I could see all of the different tasks which were run, and I could see that they were run serially like this. So this is how much time each task took. Yes, it's only seven seconds, but at least I understand the performance. Now, Gradle supports uh, parallel execution. So if I turn on parallel and rerun the build, same build with clean, and rerun it with a scan, you can see it runs all the tasks in parallel here. Uh, publish that scan, and it takes three seconds instead of seven seconds. For a seven second build, maybe not that significant. For a 20 minute build that takes 10 minutes, now that's a significant improvement for my productivity. I don't have to wait 20 minutes for my feedback. I can get it in half that time. And if I take a look at this build scan, go to the timeline, you can see here that all the tasks are running in parallel and that's what helps to condense the total amount of time spent running this build. One final feature which is worth looking at is the caching. And the caching means, okay, if I've already built it once, I can get the build results from the build cache. I don't even need to build it again. So I'm gonna be even faster if I'm not actually even building the stuff that doesn't need building. In this case, it only takes one second when I'm building it with the cache. And if I have a look at the build scan and look at the timeline, I'm still running stuff in parallel in a much shorter amount of time. And I can see each of these tasks, this wasn't compiled because I got it from the cache. There's a whole bunch of stuff which came from the cache. I didn't even need to perform this. So Gradle offers you features which will help you speed up the build if you know about them and know how to use them. Now I don't wanna be biased here because it's not just about Gradle. Maven has similar properties as well. If I go over to my Maven project in Serial, I ran this in Serial, it took four minutes, um, and 11 seconds. Let's look at the build scan for this. And we can see on the timeline, it runs all the tests, uh, serial, all the tasks, sorry, goals in Maven, serially. Um, and when I ran them in parallel, which I have to run with this command here, if I look at this build scan on the timeline, it does run the various goals in parallel. So it does reduce the amount of time needed 
In this particular case, it doesn't make a huge difference because there's one task, one goal, which is the test, and that takes up the majority of the time. So if we can find a way to improve the performance of that, and Maven has different ways of running tests in parallel, for example, then we can start looking at that area to improve the, the, the build time. In summary, as developers, it's important that we invest some time in learning the tools that we use every day in our day job. This will help us be more productive. It will help free us up from some of the drudgery and allow us to concentrate on the creative aspects of our job. This means investing time regularly in learning the tools that we use, maybe every week, maybe every month, but this is a continuous learning experience. We're also only going to adopt the features which help us in the things we're doing every day. We don't need to learn everything about product. We can discard the 99% of the functionality that we're just not using in the job day to day right now. And finally, one of the things I think we should take home is that the features and capabilities of the tools that we use are almost definitely transferable between competing products. So just because we prefer a particular product doesn't necessarily mean that it's better than another. And the things that we've learned about one particular product or tool or language we may be able to apply those skills to a competing or similar product or tool. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider supporting us via Patreon.